That's a little bit of Clyde Davenport's Roses in the Morning, which is a lovely tune that I love to play at that tempo. So if you were playing this tune and up to tempo, certainly, um, some of the things that I do are, are more difficult to do. Some of those alternate string pull-offs, which if you don't know what they are, it's, it's things like if you're playing, say, the third string at the second fret, and then pulling off on your first string with your left hand. But you can get a lot of the same notes uh, without any drop thumbing without any alternative string pull-offs. Um, you could do it really simple like this. Do, think of your basic strum. You're doing three, one, two, three, then a D seventh chord. pretty much the whole A part. So now once you get the basic melody in your head and a more rhythmic style of doing it, you can start adding some things to it. Um, one of the very first things you can do is just add a hammer-on before you get to that third string open. Do a hammer-on onto the fourth string to the second fret. And you're always coming down to that, you're ending those phrases on the D seventh chord, which is the second string, first fret, third string, second fret. And it's kind of a nice drone and it's it really, sounds nice. It's the five chord when you're playing in this key. So now what I like to do is I play a lot more melody in there. I'm going to resolve everything again on that D seventh chord, but before I get to that, I'm going to do, I'm going to start with a hammer on. Third string open, then third string second fret. And now you do the alternate string pull off. And then leave that finger down and do a drop thumb, play the second string, and then thumb on your third string, and then open, and then back to that D seventh chord on the third string. So again. And if you can just do that over and over again, so your hammer on, third string, second fret, Pull off on the first string with your left hand. Now you you have to keep your middle finger anchored, but that finger, your index finger, comes off while you do the double thumb, and then open third string, and then the big D seventh chord. So. second half of that really does most of the same thing. You go down to the fourth string. And then the whole part repeats. Now on the recording, when Clyde does it, he does that part three times. And then he'll do the B part twice. So it's a little bit odd and 
I've heard people, you know, double it up so they do it four times, the A part, and then two times the B part. And I'm not sure how it was supposed to be, you know, played. On that day that they recorded Clyde Davenport doing this, he did it three times on the A part. So take take that with whatever grains of salt you need to, because I don't know. <laughs> so the B part is what really sets this tune apart for me. It's got a really nice melody line that you you don't hear very often it, it doesn't um it sort of surprises you and it goes now what you're really doing is you're you're doing g g d g c g but we're not playing those big chords instead we're just playing a melody line that fits within those chords and what's neat about this is you get to use the fifth string as a melody note so the notes are actually, you can't do that hammer off really easily unless you've got a really strong pinky. So it's a lot easier instead of playing the note that way to play it with your fifth string. So you can do a hammer on to the third string at the second fret and then first string at the second fret and then thumb on the fifth string. And that's kind of nice. It feels, it feels really weird the first couple times you do it. But once you get used to it, it's kind of nice. And then you're just playing first string at the fourth fret, which is part of that, the big D chord. So, and then down to a C chord. And then the part that goes up the top here, I, the melody note goes like this. But you can leave out that, that first hammer on's a little tricky because you're hammering on on the second string, and, and the first string gets in the way a lot of times. So you can just play, if you got your index and middle finger on the first and second string, both at the fifth fret. And you can just do a hammer on, on the first string from that five to seven, and then do a double thumb. And then open. But I, every, every once in a while, I like to do that extra hammer on. So again, first and second string at the fifth fret. And the hammer ons are going to be both to the seventh fret. So first on the second string. See, it's, it's hard to do. And then the first string. And then drop thumb, first and second string. One of those things where it's actually easier to do the hammer on the tricky part uh, more up to tempo when you try to do it slow you're you get too much time to think so and it repeats after that does that that first part again so it's a really short B part and it it's really just um, there's two halves to it and they're both the same both exactly the same. Now I'm coming back into the A part again after you've done this. It's nice to do a real nice drawn out slide from the second fret to the fourth fret on the fourth string. And then you're back into. Okay, now for those of you who learned best by tablature, I do have a book that I can, uh, I'll, I'll hold up a copy of it that you can order online at any time through my website tmckenzie.com or Banjo Hangout. Um, just search for Scratching the Surface and it's, it's in that book. Um, I hope that helped. If you have any questions or suggestions, please feel free to write them in the comments below and I hope everybody's staying well. Thank you.